Syndicate is one of the worst AC games. Syndicate was awful and way worse than Rogue. Syndicate was the worst Assassin's Creed ever and it didn't even deserve to be finished. These comments seem to be a common trend on my channel when it comes to AC Syndicate, and I'll be totally honest, when I played it back in 2015, I was inclined to agree. I have, however, been playing and reviewing a bunch of Assassin's Creed games recently, and given the largely negative reviews, I was keen to hop onto Syndicate and see if it really deserves all of the hate. This review will be largely spoiler free, and let's just jump straight on in. To start, it's easy for me to say that 19th century Victorian London looks absolutely gorgeous. This is by far the most modern day setting that Assassin's Creed has ever had, set in 1868 at the onset of the Second Industrial Revolution. It's even arguable that London might be the most iconic setting they've ever chosen, as you'd be pressed to find many people who don't know landmarks such as Big Ben or St Paul's Cathedral, which of course are all scalable. Graphically, this game is solid too, and whilst I'm playing on my mid-spec PC, which will make a difference compared to console players, it doesn't actually have an FPS cap, and I tend to get between 90 and 110 frames per second, and mostly it's a really, really smooth experience. In terms of exploring the city, we can obviously travel around on foot, grappling hook, horse and carriage, boats, and even trains, and besides the grappling hook which I'll discuss later, carriage riding is the next most interesting. This is quite the new feature that Syndicate introduced, and as London is a fairly large map, actually about a third larger than Unity, which by the way, being the next game on from Unity, I will be making a lot of comparisons to, Syndicate gives us the opportunity to basically experience Grand Theft Auto in Victorian London. Whilst carriages are a solid way of getting around, and much faster than running across rooftops, they aren't perfect and in many cases can be awkward to use, and actually at the time of release were a big buggy mess and a common complaint. The NPCs in Syndicate compared to Unity are way less populated, but this is actually a good thing. Whilst the NPCs in Unity look fantastic, walking through the crowds actually kinda felt like you were just walking through ghosts. In Syndicate, they feel more like real people with some weight to them, in the end sacrificing density for stability, and overall I think that's a positive. Within the game is also a full day and night cycle, although this will also be mission dependent, as well as a complex weather system, both two things we didn't have in Unity. Overall, and it's the thing that Assassin's Creed always does so well, the world they build is just incredible. London is a detailed, rich, large, bustling city full of different life, whether that be child labourers, police roaming the streets, carriages of multiple shapes and sizes, and it just succeeds in fully immersing you in a beautiful, truly one-of-a-kind experience. Being from London, I am potentially a little biased, but you're truly not going to find another game setting quite like this one. Now, I don't want to spoil anything for you, but I will give you the plot, which the game jumps into right from the get-go. You play as Evie and Jacob, the low-level brother and sister assassin duo, who decide to take it on board to conquer London, establish their own gang, and crush the Templars within, all while searching for Isu artifacts. A simple story that's easy to follow. There are no major twists or groundbreaking elements within the story, but it's dependable in a sort of basic and one-toned way. In many ways, it's actually similar to Valhalla with far less surprises, in that you take England piece by piece, or in this case, London. I do personally like the brother and sister duo with differing personalities, Jacob is more hot-headed and comical, and Evie is more stoic and calculating. And this plays into the missions with Evie taking on more of the stealth objectives, and Jacob more of the direct combat. You can play as either character for some parts of the game, but if you're pushing along with the narrative, Syndicate will make you swap into Jacob or Evie. Jacob also completes the majority of the missions too, focusing on taking over London and assassinating the Order members, which leaves Evie to focus on finding a piece of Eden, which doesn't really factor that much into the overall story. If you even look at the marketing, Evie isn't even in the trailer, and on the game's box, she's just a side character who you can barely even recognise. She sadly does feel like an addition, rather than a central piece of the plot. We do, however, have a bunch of awesome historical characters that are basically our side missions, including Charles Darwin, Karl Marx, 
Charles Dickens, and even Her Royal Majesty Queen Victoria, all of them helping in some fashion to further establish the world, its problem, and drum it into us where we are as a setting. There is a really jokey tone to Syndicate, not just between our two main characters, but even every side character is either cracking wise or delivering cheeky one-liners, which seems a little odd within a very murderous location and time of 19th century London, and there's actually a good reason for this. Supposedly, in early notes and concept art, Syndicate was going to have a much darker tone to everything. We'd have five assassins as opposed to the eventual three of them, the other being our assassin pal Henry Green, and all of them would be working together to take over London. There's not much more information than the concept art, but it's clear that we could have got a much grittier and gloomier experience than the one we actually got, which looking at the upcoming Assassin's Creed Hex or Hexy might be the answer. There is even a focus on class disparity, constantly referring to the poor or the downtrodden of the British elite, which ultimately is what our bad guy is a homage to. He is a cartoonishly evil, moustache-twirling Englishman named Crawford Starrick, and you may be thinking, you just revealed the head honcho, won't that spoil the story? But that's because the game also shows us Crawford in about the first five minutes. On the one day storyline, like most AC games without Desmond, it just exists. We play again as a faceless bot, doing something or other with Sean and Rebecca, and yeah, ultimately, just get me back to the animus, it's not really worth me talking about. Overall though, the story is okay, you'll likely get a few laughs throughout, but the humour can all feel a little bit like overkill sometimes, as well as it being so simple that you're never made to feel surprised, bringing it all together for really one of the weakest AC storylines ever. To end it on a high note though, the cutscenes do themselves look fantastic, even in my opinion, holding up to new games even today. Oh, we seem to have made an unscheduled stop. Now on to the missions themselves, which is easily one of the game's major highlights. Whilst the gameplay loop is very much just conquering gang territory and working your way up to your next target, it's the larger main missions which really stand out. The black box missions in Syndicate are arguably some of the best of the entire series, and if you're not aware of what these are, you're basically given a target to assassinate, usually within a building that you have to infiltrate, and there are a variety of ways that you can approach that target. In Syndicate, there are massive locations like the Bank of England or an insane asylum where these missions take place, and they each start with a really cool cutscene animation, which then showcases different killing or entry opportunities within that location, leading on to potentially different cutscenes and mission endings, depending on what route of assassination you take. I'll give you an example where upon infiltrating a morgue, you can pretend to be a dead body that's going to be autopsied, get wheeled to your target under a white sheet, to then spring up unexpectedly and stab them amidst a crowd of onlookers. Genuinely a really, really fun experience, and each black box mission is really different, detailed, and super intricate. And the side content is also really lively and great fun as well. Most of it ties into conquering London piece by piece with our gang the Rooks, but I like it a lot because it further explores Evie and Jacob's personalities outside of the main storyline. Whilst the main storyline is pretty short at around 12 hours, the abundance of side content makes up for this hugely, adding a further 40 hours or so to the game. One side mission in particular, which could actually be up there for one of the greatest gaming side missions ever, is the mission where you travel forward in time to World War I. We have the opportunity to play as Lydia Fry, granddaughter to Jacob, where you experience an entire full sequence in London during the Blitz, meeting Winston Churchill, taking out enemy planes with a ground gun, and it really scratches that World War I Assassin's Creed itch the community has been begging for since the dawn of time. They did actually have a World War II mission in Unity as well, however I strongly feel that Syndicate improves on this, and I am hoping that one day we do eventually get an entire game like this. I made a video last year about all of the time periods I'd love Assassin's Creed to take us to next, and this is easily one of my strongest choices. Aside the black box missions and the side missions though, the conquering of the gang territory, which is the thing you'll find yourself doing the most, is pretty repetitive. There are four different types of gang territory missions, hunting down a key Templar, child liberation where you free child workers from factories, strongholds where you basically just kill every single enemy within a small area, and bounties where you have to sneak into a gang controlled zone and take some hostage and lead them out. 
Once all territory in that area has been captured, you'll then start a gang war, which is a giant street brawl between your gang the Rooks and the enemy Templars. This concept is actually very similar to AC Brotherhood in terms of taking out the bourgeois strongholds, and whilst as a concept I do like this idea, it can all feel like a bit of a grind. Overall, whilst the meat of Syndicate's missions can sometimes feel a bit samey, the black box missions are some of the best this series has ever given us, and the side missions are really entertaining too, making your playthrough a super fun experience when exploring off the beaten track. By the way guys, if you're enjoying this video so far, a like and a sub would go a long way. Starting with the game's combat, this is a massive change to the previous Unity. In Unity, the combat in my opinion was just okay, sometimes it was a bit floaty and unresponsive, but you could have an enjoyable time utilising the variety of weapons. In Syndicate, they clearly listened to all of the negative feedback from Unity and completely changed the experience. Syndicate is very much a brawler style multiple hit sort of combat with a focus on parrying and lining up all your enemies at once to deal out a giant kill animation. It's quite artistic looking, although I think the white outline on which enemy you're focused on is a little much, but ultimately I do find Syndicate's combat disappointing. Whilst I can appreciate what they were trying to do, offering a more quick hit experience, gang style type of fighting, it just ends up becoming a bit of a tedious time. You are constantly bashing the attack button as you only get one simple light attack, hitting parry, or occasionally hitting break defense to get through an enemy blocking you. The actual NPCs you're fighting also have very little depth to them. You have a light type, a heavy type, which is actually kind of weird as they're all big and balls and look the same, and then an elite type who honestly just doesn't feel that elite. They all have high health, so you can find yourself having to stab some enemies literally 20 to 30 times, and you're only equipped with three weapons, a kukri, which is basically a machete or short sword, brass knuckles, or the cane sword. I like the idea of them all being concealable, rather than you running around London with a giant axe strapped to your back, but they also don't feel any different either. Whether you fight with any of the three weapons makes next to no difference in terms of the damage or speed that you'll hit an enemy, and even the finishers, whilst overall look great, your weapon type doesn't really make much difference. In terms of getting stronger weapons, you ultimately just gain higher levels and unlock different parts of London, but even the weapon strength doesn't feel different either. You could be using a basic pair of brass knuckles or the strongest cane sword in the game, and you might not even realise the difference. There is a microtransaction store in the game too, but it's pretty mild and not really worth a mention, and there's also weapon crafting, which is basically as simple and uninteresting as you'd expect. You do also have a pistol or throwing knife, which can be fun to pop a shot off mid-combat or shoot someone from afar before engaging with them, but overall though, Syndicate's combat is just a repetitive onslaught of constant attacks and actually doesn't feel particularly challenging either, which is why, if possible, Syndicate Stealth is always the way to go. This may be controversial, but to me, Syndicate Stealth is actually one of the best stealth mechanics of the series. Unity Stealth was good, however Syndicate's is even better, with a lot of the stealth elements from Unity being transferred and improved, especially the new crouching stealth mechanic, where you're now able to hide behind items at half height. The tools in this game are pretty standard, sleep darts, berserk darts, smoke bombs, volcanic bombs and throwing knives, which are definitely my favourite thing to use, not just able to take out people silently, but also used to cut down hanging cargo onto an unsuspecting gang member's head. Enemy NPCs are also better at reacting as well, so if one guard gets alerted, then others within a certain radar will move into stealth mode, rather than some AC games where you'd find NPCs just staring at walls for no reason. The ability to whistle has now returned, which was absent from Unity, and is always a nice little skill to be able to lure guards in your direction, and once you do manage to hit that assassination button, the animations will be different depending on whether you're standing or crouching, something even the newest AC games don't manage to do. Hiding in plain sight is also pretty great, the crowds are much more usable than previous games, where you can actually draw them into certain areas for you to move around unseen in. An example of this is in one of the missions, you send a bunch of passengers to the wrong station platform just so you can sneak closer to your target. There is even the kidnapping feature which I mentioned earlier, where you can ultimately take someone hostage and use them to keep you invisible and inconspicuous as long as you don't get too close to guards and brush past them. 
This is something I'd absolutely love to see explored more in a future Assassin's Creed game. I also haven't really touched on the gang aspect too much in this review, as they honestly don't affect your playthrough all that much unless you'd like them to. Aside the mandatory gang warfare events, other ways you can get your gang members involved is by bringing them with you for combat, or even using them to help you carry you via carriage around the map. They're ultimately a similar sort of experience to your assassin's colleagues from AC Brotherhood, always around to lend a helping hand when needed. I feel like in the trailer they're advertised as being more of use and part of the main storyline, but personally I found myself never ever wanting to use them. I'll mention the skill tree now too, which as we have two protagonists, means Evie and Jacob each have a separate skill tree. However, most of the skills each of them have are exactly the same, despite a few minor differences. Jacob is suited to more direct combat with higher health and damage skills, and Evie more so for stealth, even able to weirdly go completely invisible when stationary, as if she's best mates with Harry Potter. My body's gone! Our brother and sister assassin both earn these skill points simultaneously too, and it's all very simple, there aren't build choices like in Valhalla for example. Overall, Stealth in Syndicate is a really well oiled machine. London is designed in a way that aids our abilities, they added some features which would work really well, and then improved on old features too. If I could make one suggestion, it would just be that I'd like to be able to have my hood up at any time, but this is easily one of the best stealth systems in the entire franchise. Parkour in AC Syndicate is much like the rest of the game, it's not overtly clear on whether it's just good or bad. When compared to Unity, which whilst many hail as the best parkour system of all time, it still has its faults. Arno at times might struggle to enter a window, or just insist on swinging horizontally, but when Unity's parkour works, it is pretty amazing. In Syndicate, parkour has been near enough copied and pasted over from Unity, it still has that sort of floaty feel to it, and at certain moments, Evie and Jacob's parkour abilities can really make London feel like it was made for them. For the most part though, and unfortunately, the design of London doesn't really work for a parkour setting. The wide streets and areas of open space mean that Jacob and Evie could often find themselves running around on the ground or hoisting a carriage from some poor driver, rather than utilising the rooftops of Victorian London, and a big part of this too is that there aren't very many parkour paths for you to follow. I've been playing Black Flag recently, and despite that game being made two years earlier, and set in the Caribbean, there are tons of fun parkour routes and moments throughout. Do take a peek at my 2024 review if you've always wondered if you should play it. Here is why in Syndicate they added the Grappling Hook, a steampunk rope gun which can attach itself to almost anything. Whilst this is a fun and controversial twist, and something I actually get a lot of enjoyment out of, over time it gets repetitive, and ultimately negates that need for parkour. Why would I spend any time hopping from ledge to ledge when I can speed across a rope in less than half of the time? I don't think I'd have a problem with it if maybe there were more opportunities to utilise the game's parkour, but you end up using this thing more than your free running capabilities, which is one of the core parts of any Assassin's Creed game. Evie and Jacob also just awkwardly stop when approaching a ledge, as the game won't allow them to step off any height too large, which kind of ruins things immersion-wise. I like the idea in Assassin's Creed games that if I make one mistake I could fall to my death, and this would make me learn from my errors to play as a better assassin. Overall, and I might get a lot of hate for this, I think Syndicate's parkour is actually more smooth than Unity, but that's only down to the game design. Unity's Paris is a much denser city that isn't that much smaller than Syndicate's London, and it has way more parkour opportunities within it. If you pair this with the removal of Syndicate's manual jump, and a grappling hook which basically negates any climbing, the parkour in Syndicate works well, you just won't find yourself actually using it. It almost feels like they just couldn't figure out how to properly fix Unity's parkour, so instead they removed what doesn't work, and added a device to bypass it altogether. AC Syndicate had a lot to live up to, and whilst Unity is very respected now, it's known for having potentially the buggiest game launch in history, which aided massively to the downfall of Syndicate sales, which in its first week was the second worst selling game of the franchise, only outselling AC Rogue. In terms of pop culture, Assassin's Creed are always on point when it comes to picking a game setting. 
and whilst not set in Birmingham, and set 70 years earlier, the gang warfare aspect of Syndicate is likely due to the popularity of Peaky Blinders, which came out two years prior. Looking at the game objectively, it's overall still a good game despite all the negativity. The world of London is detailed, beautiful and vast, some of the missions are utterly incredible, it copies a lot of the best parts of Unity over, and the stealth is pretty excellent. Yes, the world doesn't really allow for the best parkour, and yes, the combat is repetitive and simple, and yes, the whole tone of the game is too light-hearted, but our dual protagonists are likeable enough to carry the simple story through. Syndicate didn't really get the chance it deserved, and whilst AC Origins arrived two years later, I don't think Syndicate bears all the blame for that. Some even say Syndicate was the last ever true Assassin's Creed game, perhaps until Mirage arrived last year anyway. I personally have ranked Syndicate 10th out of the 13 mainline Assassin's Creed games. It's probably not going to blow you away, but it won't leave you feeling disappointed either. Interestingly, the developers of Syndicate Ubisoft Quebec also made AC Odyssey, as well as the upcoming AC Red, in which rumours of it seem to be flying around every single week. Much like the Syndicate's World War I sequence, an Assassin's Creed set in Japan is something we've always wanted, and again, is on my list of best Assassin's Creed time periods, which you can watch in my next video. I will catch you legends in the next one. Until then.